back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be brewing a beer kit. It is by Woodford's and it is called Woodford's Admiral's Reserve. Apparently with this beer kit, you do not need to add sugars, which is good, but <clears throat> I'm going to add something called Brew Enhancer. Okay, so they give me two packets of yeast. I don't need two packets of yeast, so I'm only gonna use one, and I'll use them for something else. It has got some Golding's hop powder. Mmm. Funky. Never used a hop powder before, but we don't need that just yet. We will need that in about seven days. So it comes in these big tins. <coughs> And it's got instructions on the side. But I don't need them, because I'm special. I've made these beer kits a thousand times. I say a thousand, it's a bit of an exaggeration, but loads and loads and loads. <clears throat> so I'm quite confident that I know what I'm doing. I normally brew the Mangrove Jacks kits. Um, I've got a couple to do actually, but I'm just doing this one because I haven't got the hops for the other one. I didn't realize this came with a bag of hops, to be honest. I thought it was just gonna be the, the liquid malt extract. Oh, bloody tins, man. Take the Mickey. I know, but I'm gonna stick my goddamn finger in it. <clears throat> Why is it not catching that last little bit there? There we go. The struggles of life, man. And you can even see it. It was dire. Right, I need... to get my nail in there. And then, get all this gooey mess. And gloop it. Right into there, like so. This kit's meant to do 40 pints. 40 pints, 30 pints, not sure now. <laughs> the box is over there, uh, 32 pints. Now I read that some people have done 40 pints out of it and had a lower ABV, but this is the reserve version. So I'm gonna brew it like it's supposed to, but I'm gonna add a little bit of extra sugars in the form of brew enhancer, which is Spray malt and brewing sugar. Mix, 50-50 blend. I forgot how gloopy these were. It's worse than honey. Sticky, icky, icky. And you want all of this in there because this has got your sugars in it. So you want to get all that in. And I will rinse these out with a bit of hot water in a sec. Just to... Make sure we've got all of it. Uh, are we using a glove whilst doing that? Because I know for a fact that that is going to be very, very hot. So just keep that out of the way for now. And then we open the second tin. <clears throat> and then repeat the process of failing to un-can it the first time. Oh, that one worked a bit better. actually came off. Let's move that out of the way and then we get the second one in. What this stuff is, is it's pretty much a pre-made wort. The brewers have brewed this and then reduced it down, taking most of the water out of it, leaving the the malty goodness and they even put the hops in as well. This has got a hop and that stuff's used to dry hop it so the bittering hops are already in this. Um, but this is just like a concentrated syrup which would have been a liquid wort or wort I'm not sure what people call it I call it wort might be wort 
call it gloop. Let's just call it gloop. And again, I'm going to get in there with some hot water in a second. <clears throat> That's quite a lot in there, a nice amount. So let's get some hot water. So now what we're going to do is we're going to mix all that in while that hot water's in there. So that's going to give us the the base for our brew. And then we will add a shed loads of cold water. And unfortunately for me, I've just realized the thing that I transport my water in it hasn't been sanitized. So I'm going to have to pause this and sanitize that right now. And then come back and carry on mixing that in. So that's that being sterilized. So what I'm gonna do is mix this in. And because of that hot water, it really does just break down really, really well. Really quickly. It's not like honey. Honey takes forever. Unless you're using hot water to begin with. Yeah, that's good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh out some brewing enhancer. Just kick the box that I threw over there. It's annoying me that I can't see what I'm doing because the giant vessel's kind of blocking it, but all I'm doing is weighing something out anyway. Hey, get my bag of answer which is all kind of congealed because it's been in there a long time unused just sat there and this stuff's like really really powdery it goes everywhere it's so fine it's unbelievable and I'm gonna put 100 grams of this in because it doesn't actually need any So the thing says. Okay, 105 grams, because that's just how it went. And I'm not gonna fart around removing five grams. Pop that out of the way for now. It's going all over the place already. And we're gonna put that in gradually, because while stirring, because it likes to clump up. <clears throat> Straight away, it's gone into clumps. It'll break down. You just gotta be quite vigorous with it. Continue mixing whilst pouring it in. And when you're sure that all that's gone in, you can stop mixing. If you can still see clumps, keep mixing. We shall wait for that to finish sanitizing and then we shall add some water. That's the water in up to the 18 litre mark, which is where it says to do it to. Now we oxygenate the wort by beating the crap out of it with a spoon, getting loads and loads and loads and loads of air in there. All that's left to do now is to take a hydrometer reading, check the temperature. Temperature's pretty low at the moment, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out, do, I'm gonna cover it up. Once I've put the, um, uh, took a hydrometer test, I'm gonna just cover it up loosely and I'll pitch the yeast a bit later once it's, uh, once the temperature's risen up, because all that cold water's just cooled it down now. So let's do a hydrometer test. 
see what fermentables we've got in there, which will give us a, a guesstimate as to what the ABV is going to be. Always write your information down uh, as and when you find the information. So if you do a hydrometer test today, write it down today. Get yourself a little booklet or a pad or something. I find it really helpful and in the past I've forgotten to do it and it just causes so much stress when you're trying to figure out what it was you actually had and what you did and, and so on and so on. <clears throat> so we've got a lot of bubbles because I've uh, oxygenated it quite a lot which could give it a false reading. Um, so ideally you want to try and disperse them or remove them if you can. That's bang on 50. So 1.050, which is a good start. Um, and now that goes back in there because it was sterilized. I mean, you can pitch yeast at uh, lower temperatures, but um, so actually have a look at what this does say. It doesn't even say to check the uh, the temperature. I'm going to wait until it warms up a bit, just because I've brewed these before, and it normally says around 20 degrees. Now it says 16, so I could probably do it, but I just don't want to at this moment. So I'm not going to, because I don't have to. <laughs> I'm going to get my rubber bong out of my sanitized jar. I'm gonna get the airlock. I'm just having it loose, the lid loose on at the moment. I'm not bolting it down just yet. Um, I'll set all that up ready. Uh, and then once that comes up to about the 20 degrees, 18 to 20 mine will go over so what i'll probably have to do is i'll have to move it down lower onto this shelf and if it does go above the 20 they say to brew it at i'll probably have to put it on a table lower down um just to keep it happy because fluctuations in temperature whilst fermentation is going on can cause uh, off flavors it could be a bit nasty or or whatever so i'm going to leave it at that for now I'll come back in a bit, I've got a couple of things to do, and we'll pitch the yeast. So that's been a few hours now. We are going to remove this from there, and stir it up again. Reintroduce some more oxygen, because it could have all pulled it off. And then we pitch the yeast. Temperatures now about 18 which is perfect to pitch the yeast if you put it in too early you can kind of stun the yeast and it takes longer for it to sort itself out so by doing the yeast at a reasonable temperature which you're going to be brewing it at it kind of just gives it a head start now this says it's a 5.5 percent kit I've added stuff to this and my hydrometer, if it goes down to uh, 1.1, 1.010, that'll only give me 5.2. So yeah, maybe it's not as accurate as you think it is. But anyway, we're gonna pitch the yeast. What we do with pitching the yeast is we sprinkle the yeast over the top as evenly as possible as to not leave any yeast bergs, which are, that's what I call them, massive clumps of yeast just sat around doing jack, because it's in a massive clump. Then we mix the yeast in as well as possible. It will drop naturally, but I find mixing it in that little bit better. It's more satisfying as well to know that it's gonna be spread out 
and it's going to get a better head start on itself. Now this was supposed to be a porter that I was going to do, but my mum bought me this kit for my birthday or Christmas, can't remember now. Um, so I just thought I'd get it used up because there's actually already hops in it, which is good. Uh, I thought it was just, you know, I didn't realise there'd be any an actual packet of hops, but there is. So, and it's got Golding's hops, which is a British hops. I believe. So now that just goes on here. The yeast's in, temperature's fine. We've already done the hydrometer test earlier on. It wouldn't have changed. And then we just make sure that the lid's nice and secure. Like so. The yeast will separate itself, it'll find out, it'll filter down, form a colony, start taking all those sugars, converting it into alcohol. It says on the box, uh, add the hops on day, on day four. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do it on day seven, because that's what I always do with the other beer kits that I've done. Um, mainly because if the fermentation is still going, you can end up actually fermenting some of the hops, I believe. Uh, I was talking to a brewer about it and he said, yeah, there is a chance that you could ferment some of the hop oils which you want in there for the flavour. Um, so yeah, seven days time. I'm going to come do a hydrometer test, see what it says on the hydrometer test. And if it's below... Uh, 20 I'm gonna pitch the I say pitch I'm gonna put in the hops which is powdered strangely enough I'm probably gonna put this in a hot bag because I don't want bits in there um, never used a powder before so that's gonna be new uh, have got some other hops which I could whack in it for an extra dry hop and yeah we'll see how it goes we shall be back